Hello, and welcome back to CIS 125. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. As a reminder, the class is being recorded for playback. So we're in a brand new week of material. We're in week 11. We've started to look at animation since last week, and we looked at the sort of automated animation, the animation that the computer will do it for you. And there are uh, reasons for for you to use that kind of animation, definitely. There are instances. We will see as we learn a little bit more how they can come together. So the automated animation with motion tweens or classic tweens are very nice. That's what we learned last week. This week, we're going to learn frame by frame animation. And this is the best way to create the most fluid animation, the most detailed, the most that is your vision, but it is also the most complicated and the most effort and the most difficult. But with anything, more practice is more good, bad grammar aside. So the more you practice frame-by-frame -frame animation, the better you will get at it. There will be an assignment this week about frame-by-frame -frame animation once we learn how to do it. And obviously I'm not looking for Disney level quality in one week. You know, it takes a lifetime to master Disney level animation or Studio Ghibli level animation. But this first introduction plus homework plus examples will give you a starting point. Next week, week 12, we'll learn another kind of animation as well. So we're going to learn like three or four different kinds of animations and how they come together. Because ultimately, you're going to have an animation project for part one of the class, say yes, 125, the final. And then if you go on to CIS 126 in the summer, we're going to learn more types of drawing techniques, animation techniques, and more, and also the gaming and programming and such in the summer class. In the, in the semester class, it's a focus on the, on the software, on the drawing tools, on getting comfortable in drawing and animating. Then in part two, more advanced drawing and animating, but also programming for video games. And that's CIS 126 in the summer. That has not started enrollment yet. I don't think so. Maybe one more month or three weeks or something. And then the summer semester will start uh, opening up for enrollment. That's in the future for the moment, week 11. So <clears throat> quick overview of what I've got over here. Just that um, we're going to get practice using various layers, but with a big focus on frame by frame style animation. We're gonna keep practicing the concept of slowing down or speeding up animation. Remember very simply, more frames is more time, so it's more slower. Less frames is less time, so it's less slower. However you wanna remember. So more frames, slower animation, less frames, faster animation. We're gonna practice that of course, because it's kind of opposite. More gives you less and less gives you more. So we'll practice, it'll make more sense. In the live session, I've got a video that I'm going to use as part of the lecture a little bit later. I'm gonna play this video, I'm gonna play it muted, but it'll be a very good example for frame-by-frame -frame animation practice. And I will show this later. As usual, the recording and notes and example stuff will be uploaded into live session later. And then under resources, I've got the same stuff from last week and I'm probably gonna keep building upon on the future weeks. I'm probably gonna be adding to it because the previous stuff is still relevant now. So this still shows the stuff from last week about the automated animations. They're still useful. This week, that same video that I've got on the other screen is right here. It's a four minute video that we'll look at together in a little bit. And then optionally, you can look at this nine minute video with more examples of frame by frame animation. And just these two videos that I give you, there's 2000 more that you can look at. These two that I'm giving you are just a starting point. There's 2000 more you can look at and learn from and practice with. Skita Morphers Studio Animation, we'll use this a little bit later today. That ties into this week's assignment. So let me preview the assignment. Obviously you won't be able to do it yet until we do the lecture, but the assignment as usual, 10 points. It'll be due a week from today plus one day. 
it'll be due on the 16th, Tuesday. What you need to do is you're going to create a basic frame by frame animation based on what we're about to learn using different layers, a background layer and a character layer. Your background layer will have some kind of a maze that they need to go through. Your character layer will have the animation of the character moving through the maze. And it has to be done with frame by frame animation, but it can be done with any drawing tools, brush tool, line tool, etc. We have a minimum amount of time that your animation should last three to five seconds at the minimum, which is around 72 to 120 frames. If you're running at 24 frames per second, which you have to. And so a very simple animation of a character moving through a maze frame by frame. Obviously, through the lecture, I will explain how to do frame by frame animation, but this is a preview of what's going to happen for this homework. Now, also focus here, a side view, not like top down that we're looking them going through the maze from the top. No, sideways profile view, like, you know, Mario running through the stage sideways, not a top level down like, I don't know, Bomberman or whatever. So a side view maze that they need to go through like a side scroller. The um, <clears throat> video that I've got this week, very briefly, and let me show you here on our example video. I'm gonna play this without sound, it doesn't matter. Let me just play a little bit of the video that I want here after the ads. Okay, here. So there's a very simple animation right here. Okay, look at this. Very simple animation. Here is a legally distinct Pikachu, and then it is jumping. All right, so this is what we're going to learn today. This lasts like literally two seconds. We're going to learn more about it, but we're going to learn that. We're going to learn how to make a character jump or move or whatever. Again, I'll come back to the homework, but for the homework, you're going to create some kind of environment, some kind of maze, some kind of obstacles to overcome. And then a character will overcome the obstacles. I don't want it as simply, I do not want it as simply as they're going to jump from here to here. That's it. No, they have to go through the maze or whatever. This is a starting point that we will use a little bit later to help us understand frame by frame animation. And even a simple thing like this takes, you know, like 20 drawings. Uh, manual labor, individual drawings. That's the point of this week, learning frame by frame animation, which is a very powerful thing. And you see the little ears are moving, the tail is wagging, there's the little motion lines, there's the crouching down, looking around, etc. So it's literally one second long, but it's an hour of work. And this is the thing about frame by frame animation. It's amazing. It gets you to do exactly what you want, but it's a lot of effort, very time consuming, a lot of detail. And as a beginner, probably frustrating because in your mind you have exactly what you want and then it just doesn't come out when you're trying to draw it. Practice. So I'm not gonna look, I'm not gonna look for a very amazing Studio Ghibli quality animation this week. Of course not, but I am gonna look at effort and when you turn in your FLA file, I can look at your project frame by frame to see if it did what I was looking for, which is, again, a background layer, a character layer, some kind of environment or maze or platforms or something in a side view where the character goes through the maze and you drew it frame by frame. You animated it frame by frame, not by using what we learned last week, the automation that's nice for many purposes, but this week it's about frame by frame. That should be about three to five seconds. You can make it, you know, two minutes long if you want. Great. Going to be not sleeping all week. Nice. But at the very least, three to five second starting point, which is about 72 frames at the minimum. Going to turn in your FLA file. Later on, we will learn how to convert our project to a movie so you can upload it to me to YouTube or Newgrounds or whatever. But for this assignment, you're gonna upload your FLA file so I can see your layers, open up your files, see your drawings and all of that. 10 points as usual. There's the point breakdown, nuances on some. 
no nuance on that one. There's a nuance. So obviously it doesn't make a lot of sense just yet because we haven't learned it yet, but we will learn these concepts and frame by frame animation is the focus of this week. All right, so I'm gonna get into, you need to get into Adobe Animate. Let's get into Adobe Animate, go ahead and start Adobe Animate. And then as usual, we will create a brand new file. As usual, the HD, HD size, 24 frames. So go ahead and do that, create the 24 frames full HD file. Let's change our background color as usual to some gray color or any other color. I'm gonna do a zoom out fit in window and then I'll save. Save this in a brand new folder. Create a new folder, this is week 11. Save your file however you want. And then we'll create two layers, background layer, character layer. So all of this is basic stuff. You should be able to do this easily. Create a file, et cetera. Get to the good stuff in a moment. So go ahead and do that. Create your file, save it in a folder, give it a name, create two layers, character background, and then start. Tablet, I'll do the drawing tablet. What do you want to learn? Anything All right, so in order for us to be able to create frame-by-frame -frame animation, we need to start at the very beginning and we'll do the classic bouncing ball animation. So this is a very good starting point for a beginner because it starts to introduce these many concepts. So basically frame-by-frame -frame animation is literally you're gonna draw every little piece of movement of your character. We're gonna start with a ball, which will have very little details but it'll give us an idea of what we need to do. Now we have 24 frames per second, so that means up to 24 drawings can be in one second of animation. If my hand takes one second for me to move from here to here, I have to draw here, 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 here hand turning 24 frames. I'm gonna make my hand move like that. I need to draw 24 different drawings in one second. If my hand is gonna move very fast, like that, I need less drawings. Remember, less frames, faster, more frames, slower. So my hand very fast like that, maybe is only six drawings instead of 24 drawings. A ball bouncing in some amount of time, it takes one second, two seconds, whatever. In some amount of time, a ball is gonna bounce. So we need to draw some amount of frames where it's up here, then here, then here, then here, hits the ground, then bounces back up and comes back down. So the bouncing ball is gonna be a very good introduction to frame-by-frame -frame animation. The background, 
I'm going to draw just the floor. Go ahead and draw the floor. Just a simple floor with any of the tools. Draw the floor. That's my background. And I want my animation to take a few seconds, let's say two seconds. Okay, 24 frames per second. Per second, 24 times 2 is 48, so 48 frames. Or, of course, I can see on animate there, it tells me 2 seconds is right here, which is 48 frames. I want the background to be visible for 2 seconds. So I'm going to go to frame 48, and then again with the 10 ways that we learned, we can click on the insert a frame over here and select frame. Or we can click on frame 48 and then press F5. Or we can right click on frame 48 and insert frame. So remember, frames extend the time of the current keyframe. We've got a keyframe, frame one, the floor. I want the floor to be visible for two seconds. I want that frame to be visible, extended amount of time, 48 frames. So go to frame 48, press F5. I think that's the fastest way with the keyboard shortcut or right click don't want to do insert, um, you know, keyframe. If you insert a keyframe, it copies the previous frame, which we're not going to make any changes to. We need to just extend the time. Again, these nuances will make sense the more we do it. F5. And then the character will be the ball. So let's start with a ball. I'm going to go with a different color just to differentiate. Gonna draw a ball near the top of the screen. You can fill in the color if you want or not. I'm just gonna keep it the outline for the moment. Just the outline of a ball near the top. It's my character. Now I want half a second pause before anything happens, let's say. If I start to animate right away, it'll animate right away. And one of the things that's always hard to teach is to teach breathing room or to teach um, nuance in pausing and such. As beginners, you all just want to animate right away, which is good, but you want to also consider when is there a pause, when is there quick movement and that sort of thing. And that's a little harder to teach and you get it from practice. So right here, I'm saying I want to pause before anything happens. I want it to kind of be hovering for half a second and then fall. Half a second is 12 frames. How do you know that? Okay, 24 divided by 2 is 12. And you can also see it within the counter there. So on frame 12, go to frame 12, and then this time we're going to insert a keyframe. You can either click the icon keyframe or right click, um, insert keyframe, or F6. So F5, F6, F7 are very valuable to memorize. F5, regular frame, F6, keyframe, F7, blank keyframe. So frame 12, F6, keyframe. A keyframe is whenever something is going to change. Frame one, we see the ball at the top. No change until frame 12. Now we're going to change it. We're going to change it by moving it down uh, some amount. Select tool, just move it down. I'm going to jump two frames. Y2, I'll explain in a moment. Jump two more frames, which will be frame 14, F6. Copy the previous, this basically copies the previous drawing, the previous frame. We copy it so that we can move it a little bit further down. How much? There is a science to this. There's also an art to this. We'll get to that later. Skip two more frames, we're on 16. F6, move it further down. Skip two more frames, F6. 
getting closer to the ground. Skip two more frames, frame 20, hit the ground. Now, does it hit the ground when it hits the line or does it hit the ground when it goes past the line? I don't know, it's up to you, it's art. But in my case, it hit the ground on frame 20. So if I scrub my playhead a little bit, oh, it's moving. The ball is moving. Assistants, could you close the door back there actually? It's kind of loud and then just be on guard when people want to come in. Thank you. So um, we've got animation happening here. And if we press the play button at the very top, we can see the full animation. There's a little bit of a pause at the beginning before it falls, half a second. And then it falls, it moves. It obviously disappears because there's no more drawing, but it started at the top, it moved down. Frame by frame animation, I'm drawing the ball moving. Well, depending on the kind of the ball, is it a rubber ball? Is it a cannon ball? Is it a ball made of stone? If it's a rubber ball, it'll probably bounce. If it's a cannon ball, it'll hit the ground with a thud and not really bounce. If it's one made out of glass, it's gonna break. So there we have a world of possibilities with this ball. Let's say it's a rubber ball. So it's gonna bounce back. It hit the ground. Skip two more frames, F6. Now I'm gonna to start to move it upwards. Two more frames, F6, move it further up. Two more frames further up. How far do I go? Well, in the real world of physics on the planet Earth, because there is friction in our atmosphere and so forth, a ball will eventually stop bouncing. It's not going to go from its very top, you know, from this top level down all the way to the top, unless depending on the, on the material that it's made out of many factors. But let's say normally, it's not going to go all the way up here to, let's say, two meters. It's going to hit the ground and come back up some amount, maybe one and three quarters of a meter, let's say. And then it's going to hit the ground and come back not so high and hit again, not so high, not so high over and over till it stops. So I'm going to animate it to come back up, but not as high as the top. Yes, there's an art, there's a science to how much, but for the moment, we're just going to sort of feel it, how far to go, not all the way to the top. And we'll say on frame 30, went back to the highest that it would go, not to the highest, highest point, but almost to the highest point. You might have to jump back to frame 12 to compare frame 12 and frame 30. I'll play that. Falls, bounces, falls, bounces, falls, bounces. I reached the top of this bounce, so skip two more frames. It's gonna come back down. Yes, the bouncing ball is a very simple type of animation. But the point here is that every keyframe, there's a change. That's also the point of a, of a keyframe that there's a change. Wherever there's a keyframe, something changes. A mouth moves, a limb moves, stars twinkle, a building, the light streaks across the building. Wherever there's a keyframe, there's a change. Wherever there's a regular frame, right? Wherever there's a keyframe, there's a change. Wherever there's a frame, there's no change. There's a blank keyframe, nothing exists. Or my animation is looking like this. In my case, let's say, yeah, it took 40 frames. And then now I want it to not disappear. So that's when I will F5, add, add frames until frame 48. Don't disappear. So literally animate until here and then no more animation and it disappears. I don't want that. I want it to go all the way to frame 48, F5. My timeline is showing. There is some keyframe on that layer 
and it's visible the whole time, two seconds. There's different keyframes on this layer, and there's some amount of different type of movement and change and animation here, and then a sort of a pause from 40 to 48. And if I test the movie, remember, keep pressing the test up there to see the result. Got to bounce. Try that for a moment. Try to make a, your first bouncing ball. See how it goes. All right, so this is a bouncing ball. Many problems here. It um, doesn't look as realistic as it could. Later on in part two of the class, CIS 126, we will introduce the concept of the 12 principles of animation. These were concepts that were invented, I don't know, 70 years ago or something. Animation has been around a hundred years. You know, have you heard that Mickey Mouse is public domain? Uh, the very first version of Mickey Mouse was invented in 1928 or so. Um, and animation had existed before Mickey Mouse. Felix the Cat is actually older than Mickey Mouse. And so there had been animation since the year 1900. Okay, that's 124 years ago. So animation has existed a while. And the earliest animations, if you look at them, they're very stiff. They're very mechanical because they were brand new. They were just first invented. They hadn't fully figured out how to bring to life drawings just yet. Well, then sometime eventually in the 40s, um, that's when many more techniques were discovered and refined and so forth. And the 12 principles of animation is basically nowadays what is like the perfect um, style of animation, whether it's American style, Japanese animation style, etc. 12 principles. We'll cover that in part two of the class. You can look it up on your own if you want. One of those 12 principles is called squash and stretch, which is funny because the more realistic you want something to be, actually, the more you make it unrealistic. That means this ball, very realistically, is bouncing up and down because it's just a rubber ball. And if I were to see a real rubber ball bouncing in the world, okay, it's a circle and it hits the ground and it bounces. If I could look at it in the microscopic level, that rubber ball, when it hits the ground, instead of being perfectly circular, it's going to deform a little bit. You have to look at it microscopically with a high-speed camera. But a rubber ball, when it hits the ground, is going to deform a little bit. And then when it bounces back up, it's going to deform a little bit. Have you ever seen those slow motion videos of like one thousandth of a second and how fast things move when you look at them in a slow speed? Well. The animators figured out if you exaggerate things, you become more realistic. So we're going to do this again, but with exaggeration. So we're going to have it wherever the ball is moving downwards, we're going to stretch it a little bit. If you stretch it a lot, someone's at the door over there. Angie, if you could open the door, please. Um, if you try to, um, if as it's falling, as gravity is pulling it, it's going to stretch out. Depending how much you stretch it, it means very fast. If you stretch it a little bit, it's kind of fast. If you don't stretch it at all, it's a very stiff material. And then when it hits the ground, it'll squash. And depending how much you squash it, if it's very flat, it hit the ground very hard. If it de deforms a little bit, it didn't hit the ground so hard. So basically, when things are moving around, they're going to stretch some amount. 
And when things stop, they're going to squash some amount, squash and stretch, one of the 12 principles of animation. So as this is falling, we're going to stretch it a little. And as it hits the ground, we're going to squash it a little. We're going to do this on a second layer. We're going to rename our layers, actually. This will be ball one, new layer, ball two. Turn your ball one into a guide and hide it and lock it so that you don't do anything on that ball one. So turn ball one into a guide to deactivate it. And we're going to work on ball two. So the same background layer, but then a new, uh, new layer for a new character. We're going to do something similar, but this time we're going to deform the character in movement. And I'm going to show you this technique to called onion skinning so that you can see how did my previous drawing look? How do I need to draw my new drawing? How will my future drawing look? Right now we had to kind of guess, okay, my, my ball was over here, then I had to move it down some amount, how much? Well, there's going to be a way for us to kind of preview before and after. Show you that in a moment. But once again, I'm going to draw another ball. Start with another ball near the top of the screen. Here. Same thing, frame 12. This time, however, instead of F6, we're going to do F7. F5 extends the previous drawing. F6 copies the previous drawing so you can change it. F7 gives you a new space to draw. And we want to draw individual movement. So F7 on frame 12. I can't see my previous drawing. I don't know where to draw my new drawing. Well, let's turn on this mode right here. This little sort of eclipse icon. This is your onion skin mode. This shows a range of drawings, your previous frame, your future frame, your current frame. If you turn on onion skin right here, notice this shows you, okay, we're gonna show you some of your previous frames. We're gonna show you some of your future frames and wherever the playhead is at is where you're at. And now I can see where my previous drawing was at over here. So that's onion skinning right here, the little eclipse icon. Frame 12, I pressed F7, I want a new drawing. And not only do I want to make the circle lower, I also want to make the circle kind of stretched out more. Now, depending how stretched out, if I have a drawing that's like that, whoa, it's moving so fast. Look at that, it's leaving a trail. If I have a, a ball or a character deformed slightly, okay, it's not moving as fast. This is the, the art that is harder to teach. You know, the tools and what button to press, that's easy to teach. The art of animation is harder to teach. But basically, again, exaggeration. So frame 12, I'm going to draw the ball lower and then slightly stretched out some amount. I'm going to jump two more frames, F7 again, F7. My um, onion skin shows the previous spot where the ball was at. I'm going to put the ball lower and then this time also stretch it out a little bit more. It's a very nice, uh, there's a very nice link right there. Thank you for that. If people want to check that out at some point in the chat about a golf ball in high speed, a golf ball looks very solid, but if you look at it in high speed, you will see the microscopic deformations that happen. Okay, so the ball is stretching out a little bit more, a little bit lower. Skip two more frames, F7, draw it lower. At a certain point, like how far do you want to stretch it out? Again, this is the art of it. If I'm going to stretch it out a lot, it's moving at such high speed. If I stretch it out a little bit, it's moving at slower speeds. That's the part that's a little harder to teach. F7, make it keep going lower. Finally, uh, actually, actually, I think I'm doing it too slow. But by frame 20, we want it to hit the ground. Okay. F7 is when I want it to hit the ground. Say right here. Question. Yeah. 
Yes, so get some help one moment from the assistant. So if I play it what it is so far, I'm not done with it yet. But what's happening here, instead of it being a perfectly circular ball down the whole path, I'm stretching it out some amount. And as a beginner, you know, you're going to learn as you practice. But as it's moving, so consider whenever something moves, it should be deformed in the direction that it's moving. My hand, obviously, you're not going to see it unless you look at it at high speed and microscopic. But if you look at my hand going like this, this fast, my hand does deform to some amount. My skin does stretch upon my bones for some microscopic amount. But if I'm a cartoon, you might have even noticed this as you watch cartoons, when the hand moves like this, in between, there's a blur of a stretch of a hand. In between here and here, in here, there's a stretched out blurry hand. That means the hand moved very fast. So we're doing something like that with the ball here. It's normal at the top. It's kind of normal at the bottom, but in between it's stretched out. And one tip is stretch it or deform it along the path it's going, along the direction it's going. Yeah, in the beginning, it's not going to be perfect. Maybe not until the second or third or 20th time, but practice. It hit the ground and it's going to bounce up. No, it hit the ground and now it's going to deform at the ground. Now at the stretch of hitting the ground, instead of a round ball, now it's going to deform out a little bit. It hit the hard ground. If it's a rubber ball, it's going to deform a lot. If it's a cannonball, very little. If it's a glass ball, it'll break. So I'm going to do a few drawings that I didn't have on the previous simple ball, where now it's going to bulge out some amount. Let's say three keyframes. Skip two more frames, F7. I'm going to draw the ball starting to deform outwards a little bit. Now it's going to sort of start to deform outwards over here. Two more frames, F7. Further deform it out. Or frames, F7. One more really stretched out over here. Too much, but just for the exaggeration. If I play my animation, doesn't seem fast enough. Okay, I need less frames. Okay, we'll get to the nuance eventually. But it hits the ground. Okay, now I want it to start to go back up, bounce back up. So now I'm going to start to add key, blank keyframes to start to draw it coming back together and starting to move up and starting to stretch up. So skip two more frames, F7. I'm not going to draw every frame of it coming back together. Here's the part of the artistry. I drew three keyframes of it stretching out. That was too slow. Now I'm only going to draw maybe two frames of it coming back together before it goes back up. So I'm going to draw a keyframe over here. Skip two more, F7. I'm also going to start to uh, deform it in the direction it's about to go to, and then start to make it go upwards and deform in the direction it's going to go. So that onion skinning is very useful as it lets you see where the previous drawing was. And when it reaches the apex, it's kind of circular. There's no more forces applying on it. There's no more, there's a point there where there's no more the force of velocity stretching it out. And before the force of gravity pulls it back down, there's an equilibrium point, very fancy concepts. But when you practice it and when you draw it, Now, of course, in my drawing, it's kind of then a weird little glitch at the end that it ends there and suddenly appears up there. Well, if I know where it eventually is going to kind of end, maybe I can finish the... If I know where it's going to start, maybe I can make my ending point look similar to my starting point. Well, because I have the onion skinning, I have onion skin, you can stretch out these boundaries right here, right? If you turn on onion skin, 
it shows your current drawing and your previous drawing and your future drawing. But if you stretch out these boundaries, show me all my drawings so far, and now you're gonna see like that full movement of, um, you're gonna see the full movement of, of that so that I can see that eventually I kind of need to have the, the drawing somewhere near up over there It's a lot of frames to look at. You should just keep it simple, like two or so. You could sh sh look at all your frames at once if you want, but I think that's way too much to look at. So now the bouncing ball. Yeah, the ending, of, the ending of it doesn't loop as well as I want. That's okay, I'm learning. But the point here is there's the ball without any gravity happening. Then as it's falling, gravity is stretching it down. Then there's the force of the floor which deforms it when it hits the floor, then it bounces back up and the force of it bouncing back up is stretching it upwards and then eventually hits the top where no more gravity and no more velocity is affecting it and then it falls again. Try that for a moment. It's not going to be perfect, of course, but try that for a moment. Try to make a bouncing ball with a squash and stretch technique. Okay, I need to find professor. I need to find the what is the format to animate the frames. C three form. So this, of course, needs a lot of practice to get perfect at it. It takes a while. Um, and so far, again, to, to, the, to some amount of a degree, you're going to exaggerate to get realism. Maybe I made it squash too much at the bottom. I think the squashing at the bottom is a little too slow. You know, I would love it to loop back perfectly at the top. You know, there's a lot of nuance. And what we've been doing right now is very mechanically, I've been saying skip two frames at a time to make a new keyframe. Wherever there's a keyframe, there's a change. Now here's the part where without making any more drawings, here's how we can speed it up. I think the part where it deforms as it hits the ground is too slow. You know, these frames right here are too slow. We have too many frames, right? More frames is more time, slower. We have too many frames. In my case, frame 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, maybe 28. So this little group right here is too slow. We have two frames at a time. To speed it up, well, let's not put two frames. Let's put one frame. We have two frames that are this drawing here, two frames that are this drawing or this pose here, two drawings for this pose, two drawings for this pose. I'm gonna remove. This is shift F5, remember F5, add more time, shift F5, remove time or frames, or right click, remove frame, not clear frame, that's something else, remove frame, shift F5. So instead of right here, there, there are all of these frames, uh, remove the extra frames so that it looks something like that. Less frames, less time, faster movement. So the squash part right here is going to now be faster, twice as fast, technically. There were two frames at a time. Now there's only one frame at a time, twice as fast. And then, of course, at the end over here, well, the uh, because I removed frames over here, I no longer have frames at the end here. So after the animation happens, it'll disappear. So obviously, we need to fill frames here, F5. 
go to that final frame there, F5, so that it doesn't disappear. Now when I test it, the uh, squash part will be faster. Obviously, we can't go less than one frame. Now we would have to tweak the individual drawings, but for a starting point, that's fine. Instead of any, everything mechanically being two frames, two frames, two frames, two frames, okay, this part that is faster, less frames. If I want to slow something down, let's say I want it to be slower as it's reaching the top. That's how gravity works on the planet Earth, that when something bounces and comes back, it doesn't, depending on the material, it doesn't come back to the very top at the same speed. It slightly slows down to the top, comes down. As it loses energy, kinetic energy, things slowly stop bouncing. So if I want to slow it down as it's coming up, more frames. So let's say we're at the part where now it's going up and nearing the top, these final frames over here maybe, as it's nearing the top, I need more time. So instead of two frames or two frames of a pose, two frames of a pose, two frames of a pose, how about three frames of a pose, F5, three frames, three frames. I've got too many frames at the end there, so either I remove those extra ones or add more at the end here, whatever, as long as they match up. So normal amount of speed, two frames. Fast speed, one frame. Slower speed, three frames. It's not always the case that this is the simple answer, but this is a simple answer as a starting point. Two frames, normal speed, one frame, fast speed, three frames, slow speed. What I'm getting at, it's very subtle, maybe too subtle. Maybe I'll add one more frame on the slow or two more frames or whatever. This is again, the part about, yes, there is a scientific formula. It's too early to talk about that. You can do it now by how it feels. It still doesn't quite feel quite right. I want it even slower as it goes to the top, it's losing energy even more, so slower. So these final frames over here, I'll add, I will say two more. F5, twice, F5, F5. So technically I've got one, two, three, four, five frames in total for one drawing, five for one drawing, five for one drawing. One for one drawing, one pose, two for one pose. These are all a certain speed, relatively. These are a faster speed, relatively. These are a slower speed relatively. And once again, I get to, since I've added more frames, now my background disappears. So, okay, well, I'll add more frames to the background at five. Play that. It's too slow, but that's okay. I'm learning, I'm practicing, I'm adding or removing frames as I see fit, as I see that it feels Right. Slow on the uptake. So I'll remove one frame. I added two frames. Again, yes, keyboard short uh, right clicks and all of that work. Keyboard shortcuts are going to be better. Shift F5 removes a frame. make a selection of multiple frames and remove them all at once. So comparatively, the frames when it hits the ground, that looks like it feels like it's animating faster. And then there's a slower part of it as it comes back to the top. Bounces. In this case, maybe I don't want that pause at the beginning. Right, what's happening here is show the ball at the top of the screen for half a second before any movement happens. Okay, actually, let me take all that away. All of these frames here, I'm going to select all of these non-movement, non-changing frames. Select all of those. Shift F5 or right-click remove frame. So now the animation is going to happen right away. No pause. Right away movement is going to happen. This version of the ball had a pause for whatever reason. And then over here, we just have movement. Obviously, then at the end here, 
now the animation ends here, but my background extends here. So just make them match. To pause at the end of the animation instead of the beginning of the animation, I could remove that. All of this pause at the end. All those, see that trick? All of those frames, I want to get rid of them. I can make a big selection up to that point. Right click, remove all those frames, Shift F5. Frames more time, less frames less time. Now there's less of that pause at the beginning or the end. Still not really synchronized from the beginning to the end, but that's okay. If it was a ball with absolutely no amount of gravity, if it was like, let's say, a living creature bouncing, then yeah, it would have no amount of gravity affecting it, I guess. But in this case here, there's the weird pause. There's the weird part not synchronizing, which one trick that you can do is, well, if you know exactly where the beginning drawing is and you have the final drawing, well, one trick you can do is Instead of trying to draw the final frame, what about if I copy my first drawing and then on my final frame, paste in place. So I've got an exact copy from my first frame and my last frame. And if that's done properly, then you get a seamless animation. It's not really seamless here, but if you copy the first frame, paste it into the last frame, and if everything goes right, you could have a seamless animation. Door so onion skinning really helps. getting there. But here we've got the principle, one of the 12 principles of animation, squash and stretch, applied to the bouncing ball technique, where if, if, if you don't add any exaggeration, it looks very mechanical, very robotic, which you might want. If you've got a robot character, it is going to move very robotically, perfectly aligned robotically. Maybe you want that. But a human character, a humanoid character, an animal character, an imperfect non-robotic character, there's going to be some amount of exaggeration. Again, we'll get to this in a moment. But if we again look at the example animation that we're using, that we will use in a moment, again, the legally distinct Pikachu, let's look at that one more time. So on this right here, we've got, we're going to see the character moving. If you look very carefully, you're going to see a little bit of squash and stretch there. It's very subtle as well, but look at it right here. Look at that. As it's moving in a direction, it is stretched out and deformed to that direction. As it hits a part of the, um, as it hits a part of the floor, you kind of catch it it kind of squashes a little bit there. Squash is when it stops, stretch is when it moves. So going from a ball to this, we'll do that today, but we're starting with the ball so far. Frame by frame animation. Yeah, it takes very, it's very time consuming. We spent 40 minutes, 45 minutes on a ball and it's still not perfect. That's okay. Time plus effort equals greatness. So at this point here, we're getting up to our first break. If you didn't quite get it working, take a moment to practice it. If you want to take a break, take a break. Let's say we'll round it up. It's about one o'clock. We'll break until uh, one ten. Try to work on this a bit. If you need help, call myself or the assistant's over. Take a break if you need it, and we'll continue. Next up, we're going to make a little ghost animate and kind of move around and so forth. The ghost is kind of nice to really exaggerate squash and stretch. Um, so we'll do that after the break. We'll take a break until 1.10, and we'll move on.
Okay, you see, okay, I be the line and the ball uh, for to make the frame. Layer background and call the other one ball. This
now do this. So far, yes. we're still on the break, but did anyone get a chance to observe the uh, eclipse? Did you notice the um? phenomenon of the uh, shadows on the ground. That's one way you can see the eclipse. But if you see the little shadows on the ground, you'll see that uh, an eclipse happened. Did anyone notice that or take any photos? I'll load up one of these pictures that I took. What's that? Didn't you get the last yeah, it happened between um, 10.30 and 12.30. But so here's a photo that I took right here earlier today. So if you noticed on the shadows, you said... Yeah. So instead of circles on the ground, you, you saw little crescents while the eclipse was happening. So if you if the sky looked a little bit darker than usual, that was the eclipse. And if you noticed on the ground little crescents, that's the uh, instead of crescents right here. You know, normally it's a circular shadow or highlight. It's the shape of the moon. It's the eclipse twenty twenty four. Best ones were on other parts of the country and the world. For us, it wasn't a total darkness and such. But the main thing was that you could see the, the shadows differently than normal. You see them as little crescents.
All right, let's go on. So here now we're going to work with a ghost as our character and make it move around rather than just a bouncing thing. So we're gonna make a ghost character. The reason I want us all to do a ghost is because this is where we can see very obviously squash and stretch. Also, we're not constrained with, okay, it's got legs, so it needs to move. We're gonna do like the classic Pac-Man ghost, which is, you know, like a sheet with just trailing papers or whatever. So to set ourselves up here, um, Let's hide and lock all your layers currently and also turn all of them into a guide. So we're gonna deactivate all of these, right click, turn them all into a guide, lock them all, hide them all. We're also maybe gonna organize ourselves by putting all of those into a folder to get them out of sight. Um, so we're gonna use the same document, but with different layers, but we're gonna organize ourselves. So let's make a layer over here call this, I don't know, V1, version one. And all of these previous layers, just put them into that folder, just tuck them in there. All of these, lock them, all of them, hide them, all of them, right-click guide, and then tuck them away into a folder. Make a new folder, call that one um, platforms, and then a new layer, ghost. So organize yourself, something like that. Hide the old things, put them into a folder, make a couple new layers. And on the platforms, I guess we'll draw something kind of like, something like this. It's very simple. Oops. Just be simple. Path, just some path. Because the ghost is going to come this way and float up and then go that way. So we're going to keep it totally simple. But even something like that will be a good amount of practice for squash and stretch of a character. We did the ball. And now we will make a more complete character. So just a simple path with platforms, something like that. The ghost layer. Frame one. So again, don't be too complex, but some kind of a ghost character like that, just the classic Pac-Man kind of a ghost. Don't worry about filling in the details and such. Just an outline is fine, but the ghost starts off stationary. Some amount of time, some amount of a pause before any movement, and then we'll start to move. Now, here's a part of squash and stretch plus the 12 principles. Uh, I forgot the name of this principle, but squash and stretch is great as the thing is moving or stopping. There's another technique, I forget the name of it, but right before there's some amount of movement, there's a technique that you animate a little bit of pre-movement. So imagine me, I'm the ghost right there. I'm gonna start to move to the side. If I just start to move to the side like that mechanically, okay, it's mechanical. But if I go like this, I did the wind up and then move. That pre-movement right there is part of the one of the principles of animation. So this doesn't have legs, but we're going to animate it a little bit, kind of getting ready to move, then move. Not just move. We're going to do a get ready to move, move. How many frames, how long, blah, blah, blah. That's the art. That's a little harder to teach. But the concept is a pre-movement before a movement is one of the principles. And it's exaggeration. And the more you exaggerate it, the more cartoony it looks, the more it could go, depending on how exaggerated, it could be realistic or exaggerated. But this little ghost, before it starts to move, is going to do a pre-movement. We're going to frame five. And for the moment, we're kind of randomly picking frames. As we get more practice, we'll be able to refine it. Frame five, F7, turn on onion skin so I can see the previous drawing. I'm going to draw pre-movement by tilting the character back a little bit. This is again where these little floaty legs or whatever, 
can be used as a way to also kind of suggest motion. And the eyes could be a way to suggest motion as well. We could draw and deform the eyes in the direction of movement as well. So I'm also going to make the eyes like that because the eyes are, because the body's kind of moving this way first and then that way. So stationary, stationary pose, pre movement, then movement. So skip two more frames, F7, onion skin. And again, the art of all of this. Do we start to draw the forward motion here? Or do we start to draw the forward motion here? Yes and no. If we started to do the forward motion close to the original motion, that is a slower movement. If we start to draw the forward motion further, that is a faster motion because we were at this point here and then suddenly we're at that point. Speed, the illusion of speed, even though it's only two frames. It's only two frames, two drawings, two poses, but we've gone from here to here fast. If the drawing were only this far, moving from here to here, haven't moved as far, it's still the same two drawings, but if I draw the drawings further from the previous pose, fast, the illusion of speed. If I draw them close, the illusion of slow. If I, if I have that drawing way out over, if I have that drawing way out over here, well, from here to suddenly here, that's like supersonic speed. That's the sort of the art that is harder to teach. There's a pose with no movement. There's a pose with pre-movement. There's a pose with movement. Then you have to decide how far is that movement. Again, we're beginners. Don't worry too much. But based on your previous drawing, I'm going to go that far, some amount of movement. And then I'm also going to add in the eyes because now the movement is starting to be in that direction. Skip two more frames, F6 or F7. Draw the ghost further along again to create, to, to try to create in your mind how fast it is and ethereal it is. There's a lot of nuance, but I'll keep it simple. I'll keep it in the terms of, okay, it's moving in that direction and it's trailing and it's deforming in that direction. And how many frames do I need? I don't know. As many as you want, as many as you need, as many as it feels right. And moving over, I guess I'll try to go just for round the numbers, which don't matter. I'll try to go to frame 15 or so. Still moving forward, skip two frames. Now, I'm not going to have it hit the wall. Of course, I could. But here's where the squash is going to happen. Squash doesn't just happen because it hits a moving a solid object squash happens because movement stops. If I if I'm doing if you're looking at me in real life and I do the pre movement move, there's gonna be a point where again like my clothing here here is the the clothing of my ghost. Uh, as I move over here, the clothing moved over some amount over there, like that, and so I could start to draw over here that this is going to. Uh, yeah, do not F6. Do not F6. You want to F7. We're not doing a copy of the previous frame. We're doing F7, new frame. Thank you for that. But we're not doing F6. We're doing it the hard way. F6 is the easy way. We're going to do the hard way first. You found a secret, but F7, the hard way first. Um, so this is going to move over some amount, and it's not going to hit the wall, but the little tendrils or the sheet or whatever is going to continue with follow through animation. That's another one of the principles of animation, but it's not going to hit the wall. But when it kind of stops its movement, right, it's moving, 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 stop movement, and then it's going to kind of have the trail of, of uh, sheet move over a little bit. And we're doing it hand by hand, frame by frame for the moment. And so some amount like this, we can have it whip over like this. 
it had the trail previous, it stops, but some of it still continues. And even if I played at this point, well, momentum, if it's going to continue, momentum is going to bring it back. So I need another drawing of it just vertical. We have the very first pose where the ghost is vertical. Then it's moving. So it's stretched in the direction that it's moving. It stops gravity and momentum keep the trail moving a little bit. Then it's going to fall back down before movement. So skip two more frames, F7. And draw the character just vertical. Stint. See, that's what I'm saying there about that little bit of uh, extra movement. And I'm only drawing one or two drawings at a time. If this was, again, Disney level, Studio Ghibli level, 24 frames per second. Every little bit of movement is going to have up to 24 drawings. The, f the flowing of all three of the tendrils and the eyes blinking and sparkles and whatever, 24 frames per second. The big studios have a room full of people like this working eight hours a day on their own one or two seconds of the movie, of the project. You are a movie studio now, an animation studio. You are going to be in charge of it all. There's going to be a homework, something about this. I'll come back to the homework in a moment. You're going to start to practice this a little bit. We still have more to learn, but squash and stretch is happening here, plus other like secondary movement and wind-up movement. I forget the other term for it, but there's 12 principles. Hopefully that's getting you to think, hey, let me look that up. You should. That'll be something I will add to the class, but in part two of the class. But here's our first tip of the iceberg of it. It moves over. Now here's where I decide, do I want it to now right away start to go up or do I want it to pause, look around, contemplate, then move? Again, teaching the technicality of animation is not too hard. Teaching the artistry of animation takes a lifetime because even making that decision, do I want it to know that it needs to move forward, then up, then to the right? Or do I want it to pause there, be confused, then move up, then move over? There's no right or wrong answer. But let's say we'll do a little bit of a pause here. So not until frame 20. There's going to be a pause between frame 17 and 20. I need a new, I need a new, I need a new pose. Every keyframe is a pose, is a different change in the drawing. Let's say on frame 20 or whatever yours ended up being, F7. So we draw each one manually. We're going to start to now move up. Well, just like at the beginning, there was pre-movement. There was a pause here, nothing happening. Pre-movement to get ready to move forward. Okay, now I need pre-movement here. I want to move upwards. Pre-movement is now I'm going to go down and then up. So squash myself down a little bit, then stretch myself upwards. So on frame 20, I'm going to draw myself squashed down a little bit down a lot. It's building up lots of energy. Squash down a little bit. He's getting ready a little bit. That's the artistry of things. So I'm going to squash it something like this. Using the eyes as well. I'm going to drop the eyes down. So after I get to the end of the maze right here, Turn on the brakes. Okay, we stopped. Now get ready to move up. Build momentum down pre-movement. And now start to animate moving upwards. Draw, doing this in twos. A keyframe and a frame. Twos. That's a technique of animation. Drawing or animating in twos. So we can, as a beginner, two frames at a time, normal speed. Three frames at a time, slower speed. One frame at a time. Faster speed, just as a sort of beginner technique. So F7, onion skin. Now I need to move up. And again, if I draw it up here, it moves very fast in a short amount of time. If I draw it here, it's taking its time. If I draw it way up here, lots of momentum, lots of speed, lots of stretch, lots of exaggeration. 
could be very realistic or could be very unrealistic. But we'll say some amount over here, we're starting to move upwards, drawing in twos. Three, three keyframes, three poses for me to get to ground level to above the ledge. All right, now, putting on the air brakes, it was moving upwards, stops at the top, just like my shirt moving over here and such, get to the top, a little bit of uh, trail at this point, some deformation, squash, of getting to the top. So two more frames, F7. We're gonna say somewhere, stop around here. The um, uh, trail will go up. Maybe the eyes, some amount as well. Should probably close them a little bit. Here's where I can kind of do the closed eyes in terms of The ball, when it hit the floor, it deformed, it stretched out. I can do that kind of with the eyes where it hits to the very top and it kind of deforms there. So at the very top, they stop there. Then draw a little bit. Next frame's over, F7, where we have, again, settling down for a moment. How much of it? It's, it's up to you artistically, but let's say we just put it normal. Am I keeping it the exact amount of size and weight and line drawing and everything? No, I'm learning. But again, that's the thing that you practice and practice and practice. How much is too stretch, too much stretch, too much squash, too thick the line, how much more movement from here to there? That that's there's a whole career and a college major, four-year PhD, whatever, in animation and multimedia and such. We're doing it, you know, in three hours in one week. Plenty to learn. Don't be discouraged if it's not being exactly how you want in your vision. We're just learning. So I had a little bit of a pause when we reached the edge right here before movement. In case maybe no pause, it reaches to the top, then starts to move right away. So maybe I don't want any more of a pause. Start to move to the right. Do I want to, again, do the pre-movement and then movement? Maybe I want it even more exaggerated because it, he really wants to get out of here. So this pre-movement, I'm going to make it really stretched out, then movement. So on my next drawing, lots of pre-movement. It's with the eyes. So much that I'm even going to draw an extra frame of even more pre-movement. frames over f7 and then because he's really wants to get out of here the next frame the next pose is way over here and totally stretched out because he, he got he's got to get out here so the illusion of from here to suddenly here wow he's fast same amount of frames two one keyframe and one frame but on screen the movement is this far moves fast and then eventually two more frames over, F7. And then we will draw the character way out over here. Outside of the frame. It doesn't even matter what the character is now anymore. It's out of the frame. And then if I play that, I still need to refine it. But look at that. We have a little ghost character coming to life with some movement. Squash and stretch, one of the principles, pre-motion, post-motion, two frames for regular speed, three frames for slower speed, one frame for faster speed, in addition to how much does it move on the screen to also add more of an illusion. Now, here's where you can add even more of the extra stuff. Like in this final one, I'm going to add like the classic, you know, wind I'm going to add the wind. Uh, that. 
I did it in the wrong frame, but I'm going to draw the, the, the wind of it that's just moving so fast. Where do we want that? We want that actually... For here, I guess... Fast that was, it's a uh, sonic boom. It's not just the character itself, but what is the environment happening? I drew a frame there of the wind. Maybe on the next frame, the wind now a little bit deformed as well. Maybe it's too fast there. So on the next frame, when the character's way out over here, the final bit of the wind deformed like this. It's staying too long there at the end. But then as I add more of these frames, two more frames over, F7. And here's the part again about as a beginner, you don't, you don't think about this. You have it in your mind how it works. But as you play it, you start to realize it. I want a pause at the end. I want to, to, to absorb what just happened. This ghost ran out of the scene. I want a pause to happen there. I also want to pause at the beginning. I want to absorb what's about to happen. I see a ghost. This is one of the principles, anticipation. Something's going to happen, but I need to see it to understand it. I need a pause at the beginning to see the scene. There's a ghost. Then I need a pause at the end to realize, oh, what happened? Oh, it ran away really fast. So I need more time at the beginning and at the end. At the beginning, I want to add, a, uh, I want to add two seconds of pause. That's too much, but I want to add two seconds of pause at the beginning. So that means at the beginning, I need to have 24, I need to have 48 frames of no movement before anything moves. The first key frame is that pose. I want that pose to be paused for two seconds. I need that pose to be visible for 48 frames. 48 frames. So I will F5, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. I will F5 literally 47 times until the next change happens on frame two. So I will five until the first change, the next key frame happens on frame two, or frame a second two, frame 48. So now there's going to be a pause for two seconds before anything happens, then movement. Every, the background disappears, of course, because the background now is missing. That's an easy fix. And then at the end, I also want to pause, maybe three seconds. So whatever my final frame is, I need to add three seconds. Three times 24 is 72. I need to add 72 frames to my final frame to give me a pause of three seconds at the end. Yeah, it's a little math, but not too complicated. But also look at the numbers that are listed there. If this ends somewhere at, at three and a half seconds, let's just round it up to five. At five, display the final frame up to five seconds. And of course, display my background all the way to frame 120. Right, you don't have to press F5 50 times. If you click on the final frame and press F5, it'll fill in the rest for you. If you're trying to squeeze in time, yes, in that case, you do have to press F5 20 times to squeeze in those frames. But when you, you need to add time or frames at the end, go to the final frame, press F5, and it fills it in for you. And this extra bit of time is just this little bit of polish, a little bit of pause at the beginning before anything happens for you to realize what's happening, then animation, then it ends, a little bit of pause, breathing room. That's the part that is always hard to teach in these classes because in your mind, the pause is there. But when I watch it and I see it for the first time, I notice the, I notice the lack of pause right away. And I know I'm going to mention this to everyone over and over the rest of the semester. You need more pause here. You need more pause here. Because in your mind, it paused. In my mind, it didn't. In your classmates' mind, it didn't. They're going to notice it. That went, that went too fast. Slow down. Add time. Having nothing on screen is also part of animation. See? It's over. Then it starts over. 
of a ghost, squash and stretch, plus other principles. Moment to practice that. Over, but try to do something. And that one is just in the frame. I don't want to do it. So that you don't accident. Uh, if I can change one of the things.
so with this, it's obviously a starting point, um, but this is going to then lead us into the third practice. We did a simple ball, just moving on the screen very mechanically, not too realistic. Then we did a ball with squash and stretch, where we start to think about gravity and other forces are going to distort and stretch the thing, and then other forces are going to squash the thing when it stops. Then we took that concept to a ghost character, which is nice because it's got a little trail that it can follow and its eyes can get squishy and all of that. Next, we're going to use the example of the video that I've got in the uh, in Canvas to now take it to the next level to a sort of a more of a, you know, a Pikachu-like character. That's more complex because it's got ears and a nose and a tail and four legs and a mouth. This little blob shape, maybe you're pretty happy with what it looks like. And from what I've seen around you, yeah, it looks nice. Now let's see about the next level. Here's going to be like a four-legged character. Plus other little details like here, what if the ghost kind of looked around a little bit first, then it moved? Well, again, that's more realism, more, more drawing, more effort. So the next example, I'm going to go into Canvas right here. I'm going to play this without any sound. You should watch it at some point with sound. Not right now. This is only four minutes long. I'm also going to pause it and explain it. So we've been seeing this a couple of times. We're going to see it again. We're going to do this, a version of this together in a moment. All right. A little character that looks around for a moment. Okay. Then it jumps and then it ends. It does it a couple of times. This video is going to then show you step by step. Create this frame and do this and do that. Watch it on your own. I'm going to jump through a few different points. Um, they're making a floor. They're making a platform easy. We can do that. Okay, no problem. So the idea here is there's a character that starts off right here, and it needs to get right there. So we simply know that there's a direction the thing is going to move. If it was a bouncing ball, we know that there's going to be parts in the movement where the ball is going to be stretched out in this direction, see the direction of motion, stretched out, stretched out, stretched out, solid, stretched out, squashed. To get ready, stretched out. a little bit in the basic path and then we've got the outline of the character squashed out stretched too fast of course then it hits with extra little details such as ears moving tail moving etc and when we do this we're going to do it very simply just like the drawing has it we're going to draw like a little bean character a couple of eyes and a little nose ears now, here's the thing. The more detail, that means the more you need to animate. So whenever you all did your original drawings and original characters and you added a lot of amazing detail, great job. You're going to animate all of that. Your chains on the cloak and your long hair and the sparkles in the wings, you're going to animate all of that. Let me pause actually one thing here. Back on the assignment. Let's go back to the assignment for a moment. You are going to create a frame-by-frame -frame animation of a character moving through a side view of a maze. You could have a couple of things it's going to jump on or jump over, something from left to right or right to left, not from top down, sideways. What we've been doing so far all day long, plus the Pikachu thing we're going to do in a moment, consider something that's going to move across an environment. Jump a pit jump to the next level, jump to the bottom level, whatever. It's going to move across a scene. Uh, background layer, draw it however you want, some amount of obstacles inside of you. A character layer using any of the drawing tools and uh, the, uh, the character itself, any of the drawing tools, but must be frame-by-frame -frame animation as we're learning today. Any amount of keyframes for your starting and ending poses, any amount of blank keyframes that you need to hold the pose, 
any amount of frames to slow down or speed up. I think I'll write it here in a moment. Two frames, normal speed, three frames, slow speed, one frame, fast speed. I'll write that in a moment for a tip. Use onion skinning to see your before and after poses. These should all be blank keyframes. There is a shortcut, which we're not going to do yet. Three to five seconds, 72. I noted over here. Uh, right. Did I write it over here? Somewhere over here. Oh, over here. Um, you may choose to animate your original character from a previous assignment or a simpler character. I recommend a simpler character. So whatever you previously drew, if it's very complex, okay, you can do it. But remember the deadline is next week, Tuesday. We're spending this amount of time so far, almost two hours on very simple things. So you're going to have a whole week. Yes. But if you have a very complex character, you're going to have to do a lot of drawing because as we start to draw the Pikachu here, we're going to have to deal with drawing the ears and the nose and the four legs and the tail, which if you get good at this, you can make a very realistic result. But as a beginner, maybe simplify your character. Maybe it doesn't have, you know, two cloaks and a gun barrel and this and that. Maybe just simplify it a little bit. What does simplify mean? It means whatever it means for your character. So when I say over here, consider simple, consider a simpler character or consider to simplify your character, I mean it because you're going to have to draw everything about your character when you animate it frame by frame. If we do the techniques of automated animation, we'll let the computer deal with it. But we're not doing that in this assignment. We're doing frame by frame animation. So on some of you that had very complex characters, you need to consider how to simplify your character. Check with me or the assistants on that. But let me play this video a little bit more, then we'll do it together in a moment. So we're gonna start to draw this little character together. They're going with the details of deleting the extra stuff. We can do it or not. We can draw a little tail. Skip that, they can fill in the color, but that's one pose right there. Let me back up. That's one frame right there. Starting point of the character, some amount of a drawing. Then there's going to be keyframe two. This doesn't mean frame two. This means keyframe two, second pose, second drawing. And remember, we're doing two at a time. The original drawing, F5, then F7, the next drawing. So the next keyframe. Now we're getting the we're getting the pre-movement. We're building up energy on the downward, getting the legs ready on the next pose, the next key pose. Well, actually, we're going to kind of look around a little bit. Is it safe? So a little bit of pre-movement there. Drawing the character on hind legs, looking back, pointing the ears in the right direction, the snout in the right direction, the tail is behind the body, three-dimensionality, third pose. Pose. Okay, that's where I'm going. I'm not going back. They're chasing me. I'm going forward. So another drawing looking in that direction. That's all of that pre-animation even before movement. We got the startled down here. Then we look around a little bit. And then, okay, we got to get out of here. Crouch down again to build up the power to jump. Notice how the tail squash and stretch. When we had the ghost, the tail is serving as a way to kind of uh, show the momentum and direction of things. The tail, the momentum of it is in that sort of a pose because it's following, it's trailing the body. Then the next keyframe. All right, so it moved from right here to way up here, quick jump. It wasn't three more drawings from here to here. It was one drawing from here to here, fast movement. And then here, clearly we see the stretch. Look at the ears also stretching back. The paws downwards, the tail hasn't caught up yet. The tail is still on the previous pose. It's going to catch up in a moment, stretch out. In the next key frame right there. See now the tail is trailing. The body is forward. The ears are further back. The back legs are back. It's about to land on the platform. Squash. Its legs are... It's not a ball deforming, it's the body deforming in that the legs are bending. 
the legs are bending as we hit the platform. Eighth drawing. Ninth drawing, where that looks a lot like the one where it was standing up here a moment ago, maybe a little trickier copy and paste, save effort. But then we're drawing the character standing up again. We're drawing a little motion lines to show movement. And then just the final pose, everything in everything in um in in just static. No more wiggling of ears or tail or everything. We're just we finished. And the video, four minutes long, it's just gonna talk over and over about drawing every pose. And when it all comes together and it plays at a certain speed, it's gonna add up to life. So in approximately 10 key poses or keyframes, in about 10 keyframes, we have this movement. Depending on if it's two frames at a time, three at a time, one at a time, then we add speed. Then we add colors and complete, complete the character and add shading and all of that stuff. And then we complete the background. Complete the background. Now we've got an environment and it all comes together and we've got legally distinct Pikachu going through the maze. Further watch the video, they further explain. But we'll do that. We're gonna use the video as a starting point. Pause it at the right place. I'm just gonna copy the video. That's a great way to learn. On our particular project, let's do this in a brand new file. Instead of, a, instead of trying to use the current file, let's create a brand new file. Save that file, create a new file. As usual, full HD, uh, 24 frames. Save this into your folder. Say so we're just going to steal the tutorial. Background layer. Have a floor. The platform up here. And a new layer character. Uh, we'll do 50 frames for the background. So on frame 50 for the background, F5 to show it for a, a little bit more than two seconds. And on the character layer, kind of like the example, you can pull it up yourself also and look at it. But basically, we're going to steal this character. So you see it's kind of like a bean shape and the little ears and legs as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm not going to go with all of the detail that it has, but okay. Kind of like the top area, body area, like that. Uh, more like that than like that. Sure. I don't like that either, but that's okay. So then we got some ears. We got a snout. Couple of legs, hind legs, tail. Don't worry about detail. Starting point. Actually, I totally hate that. Let me do that again. So I'll use the drawing tablet. Also, lock your background layer so you don't accidentally mess that up. But in the um, that layer, some creature. First key pose, static. I'm not going to worry about the details, removing those extra lines, just a starting point. Then, second key pose, they're doing it in a way that he, it, it kind of got startled. It was just kind of chilling out, and then she got startled, and then kind of crouched down for a moment. So I'm going to draw a version kind of crouch down with a focus on the ears back and then the tail up and the legs crouch down. So F7 for a brand new blank 
I want to start on uh, frame five. F7 on frame five, so blank keyframe, turn on onion skin. I'm gonna draw the character uh, somewhat around over here. Our back, tail is down. So previously like that, crouch down. Some noise startled her. So first keyframe, second keyframe. Next, looking back, what's there? So a standing up pose with looking back. Skip two frames, F7. Onion skin. Okay, so my leg is kind of over here. Standing up body over here. Eyes over here. And back. Stationary, st stationary. Crouched down, scared, looking back. Fourth keyframe, looking forward. That's where I want to go. F7, onion skin, tracing over what I previously had some amount. That direction. So there's some amount of looking back, looking forward. That's where I'm about to go. Building up energy, crouching down frame five, key frame five. Jump two frames, F7. Onion skin, it's gonna be similar to when it crouched down like that. So time saver, shortcut, pro tip, you could right click, copy your previous frame, right click a frame. You can copy frames completely, whatever is in a frame, that's a time saver, I'll, I'll show you both ways. If I go back to the pose, which this pose is going to be very similar. I am going to crouch down and then jump up. Do I want to redraw it or do I want to copy? Both ways could work. I'll show you both ways. I'm going to right-click the frame because there's a difference between right-clicking on the stage and there's a difference between right-clicking on a frame. You get different um, abilities. I'm going to right-click the frame, copy the frame. This brand new blank keyframe that's waiting for me, right-click paste frame. I'm just copying my previous drawing that I did over here so that I'm standing up, crouching down, looking back, looking forward, crouching down again, and then I'm about to jump. So that's a technique there, copy and paste a previous drawing or draw it all. Draw it in this case. Uh, so it's gonna be again, a kind of a crouch over here. Obviously, it doesn't look like my previous crouch. That's fine. But it's a crouch. Standing up, crouching down. Now, if, it's a, if it was Studio Ghibli animation, I would have 24, 24 drawings from here to here. I have one pose, one pose. I would have 6 to 24 drawings in between there and there. And everything lovingly moving. And the ears and the fur tufts and the hair and everything. But as a starting point, as a beginner, if we concentrate on the key poses, the big changes, that's great. And we can fill in the details as we get more advanced. Crouch. Next key pose, crouch goes into a jump. Okay, I need to draw now the character stretched out jumping, the tail not stretched out yet, and then 
up above the floor. So skip two more frames, F7, onion skin, draw the character somewhere. Somewhere. Now, if I have, like in this case, the little legs are also kind of trailing because it's kind of like, I don't know, floppy legs. But if it was like, you know, Superman arms that I know where I'm going, that gives you a different kind of a pose. You know, it's a more powerful pose that if my hands are going in the direction that I'm going, if my hands are trailing me, you know, I'm Naruto running. And then so uh, it's Naruto running right there. So however you want there, if you want the arms back or I was drawing them forward, I was thinking more of a power moving forward. But if I follow the tutorial, the arms are kind of trailing back. There's no wrong answer. Each one kind of gives you a certain style. So I'm going to have the arms back. I'm not going to have the tail stretched out yet. That'll be on the next pose because the tail is trying to catch up because it's the squash and stretch of the ball. The tail hasn't caught up yet. Um, the head of the ears, those are trailing back because the, the forward part of the character is moving the fastest. So the ears are flopping back. The tail, the backside of the character hasn't caught up yet. Next key pose at the top of the curve. Remember, there's an imaginary curve here to here. The curve from here to here. We're getting to the top of the curve. Here's the tail catching up. Here's the ears following through. Here's the legs following through. The arms are forward now because we got to land. So skip two more frames, F7, onion skin. Now I'm getting kind of like to the top over here somewhere. So the legs, back legs are over here, front legs are over here, tail is now following, head, ears. Looks more like a kangaroo now, it morphed in between. And so that's what I meant, actually. It was a kangaroo all the whole time. It wasn't Pikachu, it was a kangaroo. I got to go back and redraw that. But here is the character. That motion, look at that life coming there. Obviously, I need 100 more drawings to be super realistic. But in between these four drawings I'm drawing so far, I'm starting to get life. And part of that life is the exaggeration. What's next? Now it's going to hit the platform. Eighth frame hits the platform. Legs are the first thing that hits the platform, so they deform first. Tail hasn't hit, hasn't reached the momentum yet, so it's still trailing. So I hit the platform. F7. Let's see. So basically here it's going to be a squash. So even, even to help me out like that, I'm still using the ball, the idea of the ball, deformation and such. And I'll redraw it. So the legs hit over here. Maybe we're going to have the front legs also. But the body still trailing. Or the tail, where's the tail? Okay, the tail is over there. Because we've got this motion happening. So the tail is following. The head is down. Where's the ears? The ears are back. Kind of feel like the ears actually would be a little bit more forward like that. If it's still moving momentum forward. The original drawing has the ears still back following. I think they should kind of be a little bit more forward than a snap back. Just follow the tutorial, but with practice, you'll better at it. This is all outlines at the moment. But let's say I start with drawings. Let's say I start with stick figures. Let's say for your homework, you start with stick figures. And then you've got the animation working as a stick figure. Then you spend the rest of your time going back to each of your keyframes and filling in the detail perfectly. You make a new layer. Maybe you've got a layer, stick figure. May, then you make a new layer. And on top of that layer, you start to draw the detailed character. This is the great thing about using digital animation versus classic paper animation. You can much more easily copy a layer, copy a frame, copy a pose, stretch it out. You have the drawing.
tablet undo, the eraser, you have the ability of multiple layers, you have your outline mode, all that good stuff. What's next? Pose eight, pose nine, we snap back up to attention. Very quick movement from hitting down to standing up. If we want, if we want even more smooth, we need to draw a few more poses in between eight and nine, but just following the tutorial. Next up is start to stand up. Let's see. So I'm grounding myself with the feet. Starting to stand up. Is tail is down because it's trailing. The tail was up here because it was following the path over here. And now it's catching up with us. So now the tail is uh, down there. In this pose, they drew all the little motion lines. You can do so if you want. Um, draw them something like that. Just one motion line. And then the final pose, fully, stand, fully stand, stood up uh, at a normal pose. F7. So we got the legs here, the other back leg, the little rump, then the back up. Ears, eye. Body, arms, tail. We do the rest F5. There's a long pause. There's parts I really like about it, parts that I don't, but that's a starting point. This is the stick figure drawing of the character doing one movement from the floor to a platform. If I was going to do the homework, okay, next I need to make the character leave the scene. Next, I need to make the character jump out of the scene. For your homework, I don't just want one jump like that. I want your character to move across the scene. Is there a bottomless pit? Is there a platform? Is there a building that it jumps on top of and then off the building? I want more than just this for the homework. This is half of it. From here, I want the next half, jump out of the scene fly out of the scene, fall out of the scene. This is a starting point of a frame-by-frame -frame stick figure animation. I'm going to keep the stick figure. This is what the, um, this is as far as the animation happened here in the tutorial of four minutes. Then after this, they put in the background in completion. They put in colors. They draw the details. It's the full. It's the full world. For, for today. We, we did the ball, we did the ghost, we did the Pikachu, the aardvark or whatever. So three types of frame by frame, easier to harder, and they're still even harder. But this is the hardest for the moment that we will do. Here's what we're going to do. Um, I want you to complete this. I want people to uh, follow the tutorial of the video to get it up to this point, and then complete it by having it jump out of the scene. Complete that, show me, and then you can go home. This is as far as what we will do today. Practicing the hands-on frame by frame. Using the tutorial. This much, and then have it jump out of the screen. It doesn't have to be perfect and every detail filled in. What I've done right here is good. And then I want to complete it by it jumping outside of the scene. Complete that. Take as long as you need until the end of the class today, 3 o'clock. And then... Call me over, show me, and then you can leave. So we're going to end the lecture at this point. I'll help and so forth in a moment. We're going to end the lecture at this point, but I want you all complete this animation based on the tutorial in Canvas, but complete it by then jumping out of the scene, 
call me over, get your extra credit for today, and then uh, we'll be done for today. When we come back next time, we're also then going to do the next types of animations and start to bring it together. If you're able to complete this legally distinct Pikachu, you will have a good starting point to be able to do the homework. And again, with your own character, make it move across an environment frame by frame.